lectures and presentations for the spring lecture series of the Armenian Studies program. Uh, as you were sitting here and before our, uh, each program, we're showing you some of our upcoming events. And I want to just give you an idea of the very diverse and different set of uh, events that we have coming up in the months of February, March, and April. And then we still have more coming up after uh, that. Next Friday night, which is going to be the 26th of January, we're going to have a presentation by uh, our own professor, Dr. Um, Sergio Laporta, and a guest from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, Dr. Allison Baca. And together they're going to present a uh, discussion of a book that they're working on translating, which is Levon's History of the Armenians. And it's a narrative of early Islam. And it will talk about how the Armenians first came into contact with the Arabs in the 8th century, and how Hevon interpreted that in his own history. So we're looking forward to that. It'll be at 7.30 p.m. right here in the same hall. And remember, on Friday nights, fortunately, we don't need parking permits, so you can just park freely and, and not have to worry about it. On Tuesday, February the 6th, we're going to have the first in a three-part lecture series by our visiting professor, Dr. Yektan Turkilmaz. He is our 14th Kazan visiting professor in Armenian studies. He could not be here today because in Los Angeles tomorrow, they are commemorating the anniversary of the assassination of Hrad Ding. And he's been invited to speak at that very big event that's taking place in Los Angeles. But on Tuesday, February the 6th, he will be giving the first of a three-part uh, series of lectures. And this will be on uh, about the city of Bonn. He is an expert in, in history on the area of Bonn, especially in the social and political history of that area from the 19th all the way through the 20th century and the period of the Armenian Genocide. His second lecture is going to be, we haven't set the date yet, but it will be in March, is actually about Armenian recordings. He's going to talk about Armenian records and about the music of the Armenian people from the 18th, 19th century and how that uh, reflects their own social history. Then on uh, Friday, February the 23rd, Ara Serafian with the Gomidas Institute is visiting from London and he's going to present a, a very new documentary style book, which was written uh, by the acronym of a historian named Ado. It's about, again, Bon and Vaskuragan. It's, it's, it's the definitive uh, eyewitness history of the events of 1915 uh, of the Armenian Genocide. And Ara Serapi will be coming uh, from there, from London. And then on Friday, March the 2nd, we're going to have a concert. And the concert will be featuring Levon Chilingirian. Some of you uh, have heard of him. Levon Chilingirian has a quartet that plays in uh, London. Uh, the quartet is actually not coming, but he is coming. And then he's going to be joined by uh, Bagratuni and Agopian. That is, he's going to be accompanied by a cellist and a pianist. And they're going to be playing as part of the keyboard concert series at Fresno State. So we're going to be looking forward to that. So you can see that we have at least four or five events coming uh, just one after the other. And then on Sunday, March the 18th, the Armenian Studies program will have its 30th annual banquet. So it's pretty hard to believe that it's been 30 years since uh, we've started uh, with our banquets, but this year will be our, our 30th year and we'll be sending out invitations uh, to that very soon. As you were walking in, uh, you noticed that the students had out uh, their table. If you're interested in t-shirts, there are some of their ASO t-shirts or wristbands, please feel free afterwards uh, to drop by and to, uh, to take a look at those. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about our uh, guest tonight and what we're going to be doing. Um, our guest tonight is Nika Babayan from Yerevan, Armenia. And his talk is Awards of Armenia and the Armenian Church. 
It's something that not a lot of us think about because we don't really have the scope, the full scope of all of the different types of awards that have been given out over the years uh, to or from the government of Armenia, but also from the Armenian church. He's talking about medals, badges, tokens, and that's started really in the 17th century. And we can divide them into three groups, the awards of Armenia, the Republic, Soviet Armenia, the modern Republic, Artsakh, we can talk about the Armenian Church, and of course we don't just have the Apostolic, but we have the Catholic Church and also the Protestant Armenian Church, and then Armenian Diasporan Awards. So he's going to discuss these and how they were uh, instituted and what kinds of people have gotten them. Uh, you see on the table up here are the books that he's published uh, with them, so he's going to be showing you and talking to you a little bit about his two books on this topic. Nika Babayan is a graduate of Yerevan State University. And he has actually extensive experience in the cultural and musical fields in Armenia. And he's currently the general manager of the Cadence Music Center, and previously was general manager of the State Philharmonic Orchestra of Armenia, the, the premier orchestra of Armenia, of which he was the uh, director. And uh, we've had contact for many years because many of the guest artists that we've had in the keyboard concert series have actually been managed by uh, Nika Babayan. So he has a close connection with Fresno and with uh, Fresno Armenians. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you tonight our guest speaker, Nika Babayan. Nika? Good evening. Do you hear me? No. Did you turn on? Yeah. It's OK now. How is it in the back? Can you hear him, Mark? Get louder. Too loud. <laughs> okay. I'm ready for part two. Okay, just sit down. It's okay. It's all right. Just... It's okay. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. And I understand that you, the Armenian uh, studies programs, have a lot of events. And it's really great to know that. You, for example, you will host, first of all, I'm interested in music, you will host very famous artists like Levon Chilingin and Suren Bagratuni. And uh, I know how many things you are doing here, and I appreciate your work. But I would like to go into the theme related with my books. Uh, Armenian rewards. This. Uh, first of all, I hope you will be helpful to me because my English is not so good. Uh, but uh, my friend is here and first of all, he will help me in case of necessity. Uh, there is a science now, very uh, uh, develop, developing science, uh, part of history, science of history, its name is phaleristic. Phaleristic is a science about awards, about award system, awarding systems. And the name of phaleristic came from uh, the word phalera. It's a <coughs> Roman word, uh, uh, and it means uh, uh, an award. I shall show you some some items from the first century before Christ and, and uh, Anno Domini. But uh, first of all, you see, you see the, ah, oh, okay, I have it. Yeah. You see this unique uh, pendant, which is considering the first award in the history of uh, people. And uh, it was found in the 16th century before Christ in ancient Egypt. And it was uh, a word of a brave warrior. And there, is, there was inscription saying that he was awarded by this pendant and chain, uh, in shape, uh, pendants in shape of uh, flies, and uh, awarded to a brave warrior. This is considered by scientists uh, as first award in the world. And these are different kind of phaleras uh, made of uh, gold, silver, and brass. Uh, and I would like to show you the only existing phalera found in Armenia. You see, it. 
This one is fo was found in Armenia about 10 years ago. Uh, now, the science about awards, uh, as I have told you, is becoming very famous, uh, ve very popular, and a lot of scientists are totally concentrated in, in this field of history. Uh, and especially in Russia, especially in the United Kingdom and uh, the USA, there are a lot of books dedicated to awards. And uh, unfortunately, there was nothing about Armenian awards. And uh, that gap was filled by me because, first of all, I'm a collector. You know, if you, do, you are not collecting this, uh, these uh, items, of course, you have no interest in investigating. I, I'm a researcher. <coughs> I'm not a scientist. I'm just researching because I'm collecting all these items. And the majority of things demonstrated in my books, they are part of my big, very big collection. Uh, the first Armenian awards, maybe people people sometimes do not uh, understand that Armenian awards could appear as any award in the world. Could appear in case of existence of state. That's why our first award was established in uh, 1918 by the V, uh, who was Catholicos of uh, Armenian Apostolic Church, Church who became, uh, he got the position in, in 1911. And uh, then he was Catholic until 1930. And during his uh, uh, the period of his governance, of govern, gov governance? Governing. Okay. Yeah. He was, uh, he, he, is in, he instituted two type of awards, one for laymen, another for clergymen. You see here the first existing award of Ar uh, Armenian Apostolic Church. And at the same time, have a look. Here you see uh, Armenian uh, flag, Armenian three color. You see? Can you see? Yes. And uh, you can see everywhere in all these three awards. Uh, the thing is that he was not only a person who was dedicated to Dashnak Tsutsun party, but he was a big patriot of First Republic of Armenia. And when uh, the country got its independence, of course, the, one of the questions to uh, to say that we have independent country was uh, a question of uh, instituting of institution of uh, state awards, and in uh, and in nineteen nineteen there was made, uh, the the state of Armenia made decision of instituting uh, of first Armenian uh, order. Its name was uh, uh, for service to motherland. Then in uh, just several months later, there was another decision to institute another award, another order of uh, First Republic, uh, St. Vartan Zorava. But unfortunately, state even uh, uh, gave money, special money, uh, 20,000 rubles, Russian rubles, for uh, production of those awards. But, uh, and there was uh, even a competition when uh, painter Kojoyan, he, he got the first prize uh, of a jury on the Alexander Tamanyan. But nothing came to us, to our days. Unfortunately, we lost everything. And unfortunately, those awards did not appear. The only award which was established in 1918 was the order of St. Grigor Lusavovich of two types, 
and each type has three classes. And uh, but coming to First Republic, I want to show you those orders of today's Armenia. You see medals, first class and second class medals of uh, uh, for service to motherland. And here is another order of Saint uh, Martha. And you, you, in fact, the plans of First Republic were realized in our days. And in, in 1918, uh, unfortunately, we did, uh, we did not manage to make uh, those orders, but there was only one token. You see the token. Uh, with coat of arms of Armenia. And uh, people were awarded only by these tokens, that period. And uh, now going back again to First Armenian Order. You see here the first order which was established in 1918. Uh, it was made in uh, London. Nobody knows who was uh, the uh, jeweler who made this piece, but it was a, a British professional, not Armenian, and uh, they were produced something about six orders only. First class order was made of uh, gold and uh, precious stones, first of all rubies and uh, and. Uh, Adamant diamonds. Diamonds, yes. And when those orders were made, one only one copy from H. Mazin was sent, for example, to America, to Arash Nortara, to the leader of Armenian representative of Armenian Apostolic Church in the USA. And according to tradition of that time, of that period, uh, Kondak, Kondak is official document of awarding document. Kondak was sent from Eshmiazi, but the order should be made in America because majorly all uh, uh, awardees were from America. And uh, you can see here the order of Andran Zorabai. And you see it is not made of rubies. You see here emeralds and uh, absolutely different quality <coughs> and uh, you, there are big difference between two orders. And later in uh, 1925, starting with 1925, there were this totally uh, uh, another, they, of course they are similar, but uh, if you pay attention, they are different, of course. And this is the, le the last a uh, copy of that order also made in uh, the USA. And you see here the photo of Andrani with the order of St. Gregor de Savorich, first class. Among those people who were awarded by this order were very known persons. And uh, it is important to say that uh, firstly were established, as I told you, ordered of three classes. You see, first, second, and third class for laymen and for clergymen. And uh, it is interesting that, of course, we speak first of all about orders dedica dedicated to laymen. There is interesting phenomena. The third class disappeared from, let us say, uh, the, just after establishing of those orders because <laughs> Nobody agreed to get this order of third class. Armenian mentality wants minimum of <laughs> second class, but generally when somebody, anybody was awarded by uh, second class, there were all the scandals, and uh, there were petitions to Catholicos saying, excuse me, Mr. Polos got first class, but Mr. Petros <laughs> got second. You know, it's not good because uh, they are big uh, benefactors and so on. They do a lot of things for Armenian community. And uh, please, Catholicos, uh, change your mind and award first class order. And 
I have to say that generally, uh, Georg V, he uh, changed his <laughs> mind and he gave a lot of uh, uh, first class uh, conducts. But interesting thing, now in the world, it is known about only six orders of first class, only. And uh, I mean, we can say that today exist only six copies of this. The original one, the only one, and the other, uh, and the others, for example, like uh, Andranik Zoravar's uh, order. Uh, what was happening? Eshmeazin sends conduct a document, thinking that uh, Arash Nur Taran uh, will make, produce these orders at place, in USA, for example. But unfortunately, nobody did that. And a lot of families, until now, they have only conducts <laughs> and have no orders. That's why today we, have, we cannot say that uh, there were uh, awardees I think something about 15 awardees of first class, but nobody has order uh, of that class. Regarding these uh, uh, orders for clergymen, uh, the, in the world there exists only one order, you see this, regional order made in London. Second class order and third class order you can find only uh, in Mahitaris. Uh, museum, museum uh, uh, in uh, Venice, Sub <coughs> Lazarus, Saint Lazarus Museum. Only there. Unfortunately, no, n nothing exists even in Eshmerzi. Unfortunately, and uh, you see here unique conduct, handwritten conduct. Uh, uh, with decision to award uh, an order of second class to a clergyman. I just, I just might say that the Gontag is the encyclical, which is the official letter, that's what he's saying. Gontag is the Armenian word, but it's an encyclical, the official letter. And as he was saying, some people got the letter but never received the, the medal because they never made the medal yeah. that they were supposed Please to. Please sometimes <coughs> translate what No, it was good. I'm just yeah. adding to it. That's right. <laughs> Okay. Now coming to, to Soviet Armenia, uh, this is absolutely unknown story, the real story of Armenian awards, I mean of uh, Second Republic or Soviet Armenia awards. There will be a special book dedicated to that, it, it will be my next, it is already uh, written, uh, it will be published before summer. Uh, it is the most wanted book by uh, collectioners all over the world, really. Until now, I got something about orders for 3,000 copies because a lot of people are waiting for this book. Uh, and uh, the history of Soviet Armenian War starts with this one. Its name is Armenian uh, uh, Silver Star of Armenia. This is really a unique badge, it is not order. Uh, in Soviet Armenia, there were only two orders. And generally, in Soviet time, all republics, national countries, national republics, including Armenia, they have their own awards, like uh, orders and uh, badges, awarding badges. You, sometimes people think that badge is something as serious and so on, but this badge, has a huge price in the market. It is twice higher than, for example, price of any or Armenian order. It, it, it costs now something about 80,000 US dollars, just to give you an idea mm. about this badge. Uh, this badge was established in uh, <coughs> September 1921. Uh, then after that, there was the first established, the first Armenian order of Red Banner. And uh, you see here, High Grishkans with Silver Star. You see here, Silver Star. And uh, 
Then in 1923, again in September, it was established Armenian uh, Order of Labor. Excuse me, it's not Order of Labor, it is Order of the Red Banner of Labor. You see here the first type of it and second. It is a long story uh, why they have changed design of orders. But you see, this is the old one, and uh, here you see the second one. And uh, people were forced to give back to state the first copies, <laughs> and then to get this one. But majority of those who were awarded by these orders were uh, you know, shot in 1937. You know this story, sad story. And very special badge which we found uh, during, uh, let us say, 15 years ago, I had a photo, I got a photo of this badge. And in my book, which was published in 19, uh, I mean 2011, I, I wrote that it is unknown Armenian badge. But a couple of years ago, we found out that it is another Armenian order. In fact, we have three orders. It is order of labor. Very unique award of Armenia. They were, uh, they were made and awarded only seven persons by this order. Can you give an example of who might have gotten those and, and the reason? Like, what did they do to, to earn that medal? Uh, you know, all persons who were awarded by this for example, order, it's not medal, it's order. Mm -hmm. uh, they were awarded in 1922 uh, on occasion of 1st May. And uh, among them, for example, were uh, engineers, some workers, and so on. But no any famous name. Mm -hmm. Beside one person, so-called Lukashin. Uh, he, is very, he was very, very famous. Of course, he was jailed and so on, and shot. And, but those, that year, he got also this uh, order. Uh, this is another badge, which was uh, established uh, uh, in 1927. It's a badge of labor hero of Armenia. In all Soviet republics were established this kind of badges. And this is the most stupid award in our <laughs> history. <laughs> if I translate you the name of it, you will understand. It's badge of hero of the red board. What, what does it mean? Can you understand what is it? People who lived in Soviet uh, country, they know what is board, uh, red board. Do you know what, uh, what is red board? In Soviet, uh, all institutions, Soviet institutions, there was so-called red board at the entrance of any institution where we put photos of heroes of, of, of that organization. And this is uh, the badge. There were produced only 12 badges. And again, in May, uh, it was, uh, uh, they were awarded 12 persons. And the name of the badge is hero of the red board. And there, there exists only one badge in Armenia in the history of music in the History State Museum of Armenia. In 1931, there were established two interesting badges. One was dedicated to militia. It had two types, one made of silver for officers, the other one for, uh, uh, for Tsatsad Ashatov uh, uh, so for the working class people, lower class people that are working in this. In militia. Yeah, in the, in the, in the in militia. police. Yeah. Let us say police, yes. And this badge was, uh, dedi uh, was uh, dedicated to the 10th anniversary of Armenian division. It is very rare badge also. This badge is the only one, and it was made specially to uh, award a lady from America. He, her name was, uh, 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 you see here, I think. Florence. Yes. Florence Willis, is it? Um, Willis? Yes, yes. 
It is a couple of doctors, physicians, who were working in Romania and did a lot of good things for our uh, country. And they awarded by the, at that time it was not ministry, it was Narcom uh, of uh, Medical uh, Service. And they got this uh, from that organization. The only existing award. And uh, the first Armenian uh, hydroelectro station, Kanaker Gas, it was uh, established in 1932. And this is the badge dedicated to that event. And in Soviet, already Soviet Union produced another badge in 1937, again dedicated to, to that uh, electro station. And among the words, there, first of all, we, we know about badges and orders, but there were other kind of words, for example, like uh, cigarette cases. <laughs> you see here? Cigarette cases. And uh, uh, besides cigarette cases, there were words uh, made also of silver, so-called uh, teacup holders. You, you remember it. Patstakani who said in Russian, in Russian, key cup holders. Also, unfortunately, I have no. So you're saying they made the awards in the sh in the shape of these cigarette cases, and then that was the, yes. The, and there should be also, first of all, the inscription. Yes, and there is uh, there are a lot of orders uh, awards, and uh, there were all awards uh, like uh, a weapon also. A sword, for example, it could be sword, uh, it could be a, a gun, and so on. And then there are other badges, for example, these are deputy badges. It is not a word, but it is something given to those people who were members of the uh, highest institutions of the country. And uh, we say deputy badges. And now also Armenian uh, members of parliament, they have also badges uh, with uh, coat of arms of Armenia. And here you also see all, all these badges were made before 1939. And we see here the so-called badge of labor, uh, red banner, of Transcaucasus Republic. Because you know that Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan, they were united before becoming uh, separate republics uh, within Soviet Union. They first, firstly, they were organized like uh, Transcaucasus Republic. And that republic e existed from 1932 until 1936. And uh, this is the order of that republic. It, here are some badges of that time. Now, we have finished, in short, uh, demonstration of my first book. And this is the second book dedicated to Armenian, a uh, verse to Armenian church. The thing is that uh, this thing is really unknown because even clergymen, they have no idea about uh, the words of Armenian apostolic church. Armenian Catholic Church. I don't speak about uh, Evangelical Protestant Church because uh, uh, this church does not accept any kind of awards. And there exist only two types of, uh, uh, of uh, commemorative medals dedicated to 150th anniversary of Armenian Protestant Church. Now, coming to Armenian Church medals. We have to start with so-called wedding medals of Eshmiadze. This tradition st uh, starts in the middle of uh, 19th century. There was uh, production of these medals of gold and silver just uh, in small shop beside Eshmiadze. And the uh, families were uh, ordering these medals and to, to to give to young people who married. Uh, they, of course, these medals are not uh, awards, but
but it is something uh, dedicated to, and it is a medal. That's why we mention and always we uh, pay attention to these unique medals. Uh, and the history of those medals, by the way, started in 17th century in Holland. The first known marriage medals were struck in Holland in 17th and 18th century. There is about 20 medals, and some of them are in collection of uh, Hermitage, and two medals we have in collection of our, our uh, history museum in Armenia. It is, uh, and uh, again, I don't want to speak much about uh, orders of St. Gregory Savarich because I told you before, but I have to stress and pay your attention to this badge. It is very important to understand where from this design of uh, order of St. Gregory Savarich came. In fact, you see the badge which was established uh, in 1908. And you see, it is just we, uh, Georg V, established the order of Gregory Savarich, and design is nearly the same. That's why we can say that the first Armenian order, or badge in this case, uh, was established even earlier than 1918. And you see here different types of uh, St. Gregory Lusavlich medals of first class uh, in the period of uh, Vazgen the first. You see different types. Some of them were made of uh, gold. This one and this one are gold. This one are silver, were silver. And we see here other types of medals <coughs> coming from Vazgen the first, Garigi first, and Garigi second. It is the same metal because uh, when Vazgen the first became Catholicos, he uh, established three orders. He canceled St. Gregory Savarich orders uh, classes, and he established three orders. You know of them. It is, first of all, St. Gregory Savarich. Second order is St. Uh, uh, Sahak, St. Uh, uh, Mesro. And the third one is Nersession Rally. But uh, it is important to mention that there is now another order of St. Echmerzi, it is Knight of St. Echmerzi. It is the latest order established by Garegin II in uh, 2011. Only five persons are awarded by this order, starting with Louis Simon, coming to Ernica. Uh, these are those two orders, Nerses, you see, Saint Sarak, uh, Saint Nesro, and Nesheshon Could you just uh, briefly explain, if you go back and tell uh, what what type of people get which one, and then that way we this order this order is established uh, for people of art, culture, music, uh, science, and this one is uh, given majorly to benefactors, to people who do something for. Uh, church and so on. Majorly, of course, but the biggest, uh, uh, the most important order, Saint Gregorius of Lick, is given to those people who have exceptional input in development of our church. And we speak about, of course, Echmiadzin orders and uh, you see here medals, commemorative medal and badges. And now we came to very important part of uh, Armenian Apostolic uh, Church Awards. You see here three orders of Artsakh uh, uh, is it diocese, diocese? Diocese. Diocese. Diocese of Artsakh. You see, these orders were established uh, 
By Parkev Sarpazar, you know maybe who, who is Parkev Sarpazar. He's leader of uh, Artsakh Diocese. And uh, he got permission to establish these three orders by uh, Garagin the first. And uh, when he passed away, I mean Garagin the first, in 1999, unfortunately, the, uh, the acting uh, Catholic was he prohibited these orders. And these orders now, I mean, they became historical uh, items. And only 12 persons were awarded by these three orders, unfortunately. And today, uh, we cannot find these orders. Uh, you know, it's difficult to say. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's maybe my subjective opinion. Uh, by the way, he was not very happy because I put this order, these photos in my book. And he said, why you did it? These orders are prohibited. But I say, it is history of, of our church. And I don't, I, I, I think that they have to be in this book. I think it is very easy to uh, understand. No, uh, do you know, for example, that it is it is really interesting that uh, our, we have, you know, two patriarchates. You know, one is Jerusalem, and other is uh, Holy uh, Constantinople. You know, Constantinople. Constantinople. Yes. Do you know that uh, uh, Jerusalem has no any award? And on the, con on the contrary, uh, the police has, uh, Patriarchate of uh, Constantinople has four orders. Do you know it is a question of position of those, uh, let us say, uh, church institutions? I think they, they were brave enough to establish their orders without considering the uh, opinion of Eshmiadi. It's it's up to me. Now we have to mention the, mo the most famous orders of uh, uh, Cilician Catholicos. We see here four orders. You see, they are really very, very nice. They have very good design. They are huge. I, I, think, I think that many of you saw them in life. And uh, besides, uh, these major four orders. There are orders of uh, different uh, divisions. This is Syrian order. This one is Lebanese, Crimean Heidi, Golden order. And these two orders are uh, from the USA. Uh, they, this is the uh, order of King of Kardak. And this one is uh, Queen of Ashkhan. Really interesting, uh, because we had no idea about this. And you see here, order, those four orders of uh, Armenian Patriarchy of Constantinople. You see, four orders. And these are orders of Armenian Catholic Church. Interesting thing that nobody has idea. You cannot find any photo, any information about those orders in the sites of churches. Absolutely no any information, no Eshmazin, no Antilias, not Beirut, I mean, uh, uh, Catholic Church. They have no any information about orders. I don't know why they keep it on the big secret. It's, <laughs> people have no, could not find any information. I don't speak about photos images and so on. Uh, that's why this book became popular for all those people who are really interested in the history of, of church. And uh, not only Armenian Apostolic, but also uh, Armenian Catholic and uh, Evangelic Church. And you see here, this last order was established in Armenia because uh, in, in Yerevan is uh, the leader of Armenian Catholic Church of Russia, Georgia, and, Ar uh, and Eastern Europe. Uh, coming to Catholic Church Awards, 
First of all, we have to speak about Mahitarian uh, uh, congregation, congregation of Mahitaris. And uh, Mahitaris congregation, they have two orders. We found these two orders, but I'm sure that there should be some others. And a lot of commemorative medals of very high quality because all authors of those medals are very good uh, artists, Italian artists. You see here, there is about uh, 150 types of this kind of medals of Mahitarist congregation. And besides Mahitarist congregation, there is another congregation in Zamar, in Lebanon. A small congregation, but they have also their <coughs> commemorative medal. And there is another congregation of uh, nuns, also in, uh, in Lebanon, and they have the, their medal. And, and you see here two medals, really interesting medals, dedicated to visit of Mother Teresa to Armenia when there was an earthquake, and of uh, uh, Pobos Gergrot, Paul II, uh, when he visited Armenia in 2001. And uh, coming to Pope's visit, we, have, we know that last year, oh, excuse me, two years ago, there were uh, established two medals dedicated to the visit of uh, Vatican church leader. One was established by Armenia Central Bank, another one by Eshmiazin, and the third one by Vatican. And this is the only known medal, commemorative medal of uh, Armenian Protestant Church. Uh, I, I know about another one, which was uh, produced in America, and nothing else. But we have to understand that a lot of things will, uh, will be opened, I mean, by other people who could be interested in this, because when my books were published. After that, I got a lot of new materials, a lot. And uh, if I republish the book, there will be a lot of new materials because I found out, I mean, I can say something about 30 other interesting uh, awards of Armenian churches, of, of two churches, of course, made, made, made. Armenian Apostolic and Armenian Catholic. Uh, just I want to be short because it, uh, it is too long I speak and I would like to ask you your questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. So if you have some uh, questions about any of the medals or any of the things that uh, Nika talked about, please uh, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll call on you for, uh, for that. Yes. Do you feel you have the largest collection of such medals? No, no. I know that there are some people who have bigger collections. Not in Armenia, of course. Uh, maybe even not in former Soviet Union, but in America, definitely. Yes, I know. Question is? I do not want to say, uh, to name, to give names, because I'm not sure that they will be happy. <laughs> Yes. Um, when you published your first book, were you approached by people at large who may have had these medals in their home? And have you come across one or two that you've never seen or heard before? Absolutely right, yes. As I told you, we found out a new order, even not medal, order, order of labor. And there were only uh, seven copies of that order, and uh, we found three of them. Can you imagine? Nobody saw before any. But now, after my book uh, publishing, we saw three orders. And one of them, by the way, uh, three years ago was sold at New York sale. It is a very famous auction. So 
of the Soviet awards. It was sold by 72,000 uh, US dollars. 72,000. And by the way, on 11th of January, there was an auction, another auction of New York City, and there was uh, uh, one Armenian order of uh, labor, uh, not labor, red banner of labor. And it was sold, I think, uh, something about 40,000. Prices came down, by the way. <laughs> I think for anybody that's been to Armenia, if you've gone, you used to see some of these in the vernissage. I mean, there, there would be the metals, no, right? You, Those are the different ones. I mean, the, of course, the the thing. Is, uh, do you yeah. want, I, shall, I can tell you in yes. short, very short, very interesting story <laughs> happened these days. When I was traveling from New York to Washington in, in train, I got a phone from Armenia from a very important man saying, Nika, we need your help. I said, what is happening? He said, do you know that uh, there were stolen orders of the latest Armenian national hero, Hovanes Chekija. You know Hovanes Chekija. Yes. yes. His orders were stolen from his house. Oh. Yes. All his orders. And uh, he said, how you can help us? Because you are a specialist of these things. You know a lot. And maybe you can help us. And honestly, I, I managed to help them because, because I was maybe lucky, or Hovanes Chekijan was lucky, or KGB was lucky. But before my trip to USA, one of the dealers told me, do you know there in the market something like this and that order? There were some orders. He gave me the names. And I understood that maybe this guy knows who sold or who stole mm -hmm. them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I made a call to this guy and said, do you know what is happening? Do you know that you will be jailed and thrown to prison? <laughs> do you know that you have to now to do your best and, uh, and give me a call back saying that these orders are with you? And he said, no, I have no idea. But I said, listen, it's too serious. Don't joke with state. You have to give back if you know if, you, if they are not with you, if they, if I thought that he bought them. And in fact, it, it was that, I was right. He had these orders, the major orders, not small, cheapy things, but the major orders were with him. And he was forced to give it back to, to state. And now Hovane Shigijan got them. Uh, of course, he did not got them, because did not get them, because uh, there is an investigation. It goes on because some medals, small medals, some items disappeared anyway. But the major items now, they are with, uh, let us, prosecutor, and they will give back to Havana Chekijan. I told him, I made a call to him saying, do you know that four of your major orders now are safe? And he was very happy, of course. It happens just these days, mm -hmm. yes. Other questions, <laughs> comments? Yes? It appears that the current Catholicos has a different opinion than our previous hero, our previous Catholicos. And you mentioned the word subjective opinion. Do you have an opinion of why he would do such a thing? <coughs> Is that a fair question? To do what? Be specific as to, to uh, prohibit the prohibit. decision. Yeah. Yeah. So the question was regarding the, the new Catholicos and why he perhaps had banned the medals or the orders of the uh, previous Catholicos. It is, again, absolutely my subjective opinion. opinion. I think that it, it was very easy to understand. It is easy to understand for me. He wants everything to be concentrated in H. Medzin, not in other parts of church. That's all. And if he, if he manages, he will prohibit all the, for example, uh, uh, other patriarchy in uh, police, I'm sure. But he has no that power. Excuse me, I'm just no, that's fair. very subjective. Yes. Other questions? 
Yes. Can you explain that one there, the one that's on the screen? Can you yes, yes. The this is very important. I especially put it here. You see very, very interesting thing. There is uh, a Colonel Korkmazian, who was uh, first minister of M MGB, because KGB and Minister of Internal Affairs were combined in, uh, in Khrushchev time, in, not even early, excuse me, early. They were combined in 1947. And the first minister of KG of MGB, it, it was another name of these two organizations, became Colonel Korkmazia. And the thing is that this man, who served from the start in uh, Vecheka, Vecheka, it was previous name of KGB, all life he worked for Vecheka for KGB. And during uh, the, the Second World War, he was, he had very high position in so-called Smersh. Smersh, we translate Smertspionem. It was a KGB detachment which keep, kept under control all uh, fighting uh, divisions. They were, it was under very uh, tight control of that organization. And he had very high position. And I don't know how it happened, but in 1946, after the uh, end of the world, of the war, uh, uh, American state awarded 17 Soviet highest uh, generals, marshals, and one officer only, and some uh, sergeant, and only officer was awarded by American Legion of Merit Medal was Colonel Korkmazian. How it happened, nobody knows. But the thing <coughs> is that this man was jailed after Stalin's death, and Khrushchev, in 1955, he jailed Korkmazian, and he's the only person who's, who was in prison for 10 years until 1965. And he came, uh, came back, he lived, I think, after prison only five, uh, a couple of years, and he died. Nobody knows even the date of his death. You cannot imagine. And all his orders, Soviet orders, very high orders, they were taken by state, but I don't know why these idiots from KGB did not take this order. <laughs> and this order now is in America, by the way, in a collection of a very, very big person, very, uh, who has very big collection of Armenian items. So he was, you know, KGB for some of the students, the, the, the secret police of the, of the Soviet Union, and he was a, all his life dedicated to that, and then he gets a medal from the United States, and then of course uh, Khrushchev falls in. And as I told about exceptional uh, cases, this is another very, very important award. In 1965, there was established a so-called honor uh, navigator title, and the first uh, uh, award of that title was given to Armenian Aruchan. You see, you see this medal with the number first. And in his document it is also on the number first. It is really unique because during the whole history of Soviet Union, nobody, no any Armenian got any, any medal or order under number one. This is the only one. Yes. Pilot, right? The navigator. Pilot. Yes, pilot. Otachu. Yes, pilot. Otachu. Yeah. Yes. Was there a special reason why the Armenians were not awarded like the other people? Why were the Armenians? Is there a reason Armenians did not? He, he just meant that that was the no. first number one. Oh. He's the only one that got the first one of that. I, I can say why he got number one order. You know why? Because his name starts with A, A, Arucha. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really. <laughs> they were awarded five persons, but alphabetically the first was Arucha. <laughs> he was lucky, and we too. I mean, <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the time and effort. And, uh,
there are going to be some of the books outside, and please uh, come up and uh, talk to uh, Nika about the, these awards. It was a very interesting, and uh, first time that we've had that at Fresno State, a uh, very interesting book, and uh, two books, and we're looking forward to the third book. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you next Friday night at 7.30 for Dr. Sergio Laporter and Dr. Allison Baca, who will be presenting on Rebont the Historian, but how Armenians first saw the incoming of the uh, Arab Muslims in the 8th century. So we'll see you next week, and please enjoy some coffee and cookies with us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.